communicating the value of diagnostic imaging, IDEX packs integration. All attendees have been placed on mute to minimize background noise during the presentation. If you do have any questions, please type them in the chat field on the right hand side of your screen and I can ask our presenter Jeff during a break or at the end during the Q&A session of the presentation. Let me start by introducing Jeff Worrell, our presenter. Jeff joined IDEX in 2008 as a laboratory diagnostic consultant, where he worked with customers in North Carolina and Virginia promoting IDEX reference labs. He spent the last nine years in the diagnostic imaging line of business as a digital radiography specialist and field marketing manager, dedicating his full-time efforts to our imaging business. Jeff received his BS in business management from North Carolina State University in Raleigh, North Carolina in 2005. Jeff, are you ready to begin? Yep, thanks so much, Gina. And uh, hey, thanks for joining. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So uh, the topic of uh, today's discussion is communicating the value of diagnostic imaging and uh, a little bit more specifically with uh, IDEX Webpacks and its new integration capabilities with uh, the Vetter Practice Management Software Platform. So today we'll spend time talking about five key topics. Uh, first, we'll uh, start and anchor the discussion uh, with an understanding of IDEX Webpacks and the new integration capabilities that we've recently established with Vetter through a unique partnership. Second, we'll discuss how digital imaging helps you uh, be a better communicator with your clients. Next, we'll review strategies to use imaging for client communication and education. We'll then review examples of successful imaging presentations to clients. And finally, uh, I'll speak a little bit about IDEX diagnostic imaging in general and some of the other services and products that we offer. So we'll uh, go ahead and get started now. Uh, so. Uh, like I had mentioned, really the anchor of this discussion is going to be around IDEX Webpacks and this unique uh, integration that we've uh, been able to develop in partnership with the Better Practice Management software. And before I get into any of the details here, I want to talk a little bit about what PAC software is in general before getting into what IDEX Webpack software is and how it's unique and different. So uh, PAX is a gen generic or a, a general uh, uh, brand or name for any kind of software that manages uh, the image database and the uh, imaging studies that are acquired through a diagnostic imaging system. PAC stands for Picture Archival and Communication Software. And again, it's kind of a generic or a general uh, name used for the software that can be used to manage those databases. And uh, typically speaking in animal health and specifically kind of the general practice small animal health, uh, we've been using PAC software ever since diagnostic imaging uh, came into our marketplace. Uh, if you guys are like most of the uh, most of the practices that have adopted uh, in any kind of digital imaging in the past, typically speaking, your DR, your CR system, your ultrasound, your digital dental, if you have advanced imaging like CT or MR, those have all come with some kind of a PAX. Uh, it may be a full featured PAX or it may be a basic PAX, but some kind of a software that allows you to manage those images and uh, recall images, share images, or share them across your network. And so, uh, typically speaking, like I had mentioned, most of the time, the imaging modalities that you've acquired or you've purchased in the past have come with some kind of a software. And uh, speaking pretty generally uh, for, again, the general practices in small animal medicine, we've uh, used the software to manage images on the modality that it came with, and it's really just stopped there. So if we acquired a DR system from a vendor, it came with a software. Uh, and we would use that software to manage our DR images that we captured on that device. We then went and acquired a digital dental system from another vendor. Uh, it would come with some kind of a software to manage the images on that that were acquired by that device, and those would kind of all stay within that software. Uh, and same thing with ultrasound, another common modality. If we bought ultrasound from a third vendor, it would come with its own software, and then we would use that software to manage our ultrasound, ultrasound images and studies that we've captured with that device. And uh, typically that's been okay, it's worked for the most part, but it does present a, uh, a set of challenges. Uh, and for the most part, it's difficult to train on multiple different softwares. It's also different, difficult to remember, even if you have been trained, how to use all the features and all the functionalities associated with uh, each one of those softwares on each one of the mo those modalities that you've acquired. Uh, additionally, it also makes storage and backup difficult. 
uh, we have to go and back up each one of these devices to make sure that we stay, uh, that we're protected and we're safe, and we're also staying in line with local, uh, local laws. And then uh, on top of that, sharing and collaborating is a very big struggle with some of these modalities. Not all of them, but some of them. So uh, an example of that would be if we wanted to, if we captured a, a, a chest X-ray on a patient, and then we also did an ultrasound on that same patient and wanted to share that entire study out with a telemedicine specialist or a radiologist, we would have to find a way to uh, get the imaging studies off both those devices, get them onto the same network or onto a jump drive. We then have to upload those to whatever platform we use for radiology and then share them out with that radiologist or that specialist. And for the most part, that was possible, but most of the time, or in a lot of cases, it wasn't quite uh, realistic for us to do, depending on how much time it took, or uh, we would do it because we needed the referral, but it would just take so much time to get these images and these studies off each different device. So we could then upload them and share them to get the information back. And so that's typically how this has been done over the past 10 or 15 years that uh, digital imaging has been generally used in general practices. And so one thing that IDEX wanted to solve for when we uh, established Webpacks was uh, many of the challenges that we've talked about right there. So what IDEX Webpacks is and how it's unique is it's a uh, universal pack solution that allows you to upload multiple modalities from Im any imaging source that you have into one single software platform that can now operate as your uh, medical imaging uh, software solution. So you can capture uh, a, uh, a study on your ultrasound, you can capture a dig digital dental study, as well as a, a full body x-ray on your CR or DR machine. And as soon as those images are done, they can be uploaded automatically to Webpacks. And now within uh, Fluffy's record, you'll have all of these imaging studies all in the same place. So you can look at the entire imaging case all within uh, reference of one another and then sharing and collaboration as well as integration in the patient medical records, very simple. So uh, getting a little bit more in depth with that, uh, Webpacks does bring some unique features that uh, make it stand above any of these other pack sy systems that are out there on the market. So first is we have advanced sharing and diagnostic tools. So uh, these tools include uh, easy to email, easy to integrate with telemedicine specialists or referral uh, doctors uh, that can improve uh, consults and ultimately improve care compliance and collaboration. We also have veterinary specific tools that aid in diagnosis and uh, care planning with our patients. Next, as I mentioned, it's an integration platform. So it allows us to integrate uh, all the modalities that we have within our practice that are acquiring images. And then it also allows us to integrate all those modalities into web packs and then back into our uh, practice management software vector. So like I'd mentioned, I'll get into this here momentarily a little bit more detail, but IDEX has partnered directly with Vetter to develop a bi-directional integration to allow full uh, communication back and forth between uh, your practice management software and your imaging modalities using web packs as a vehicle. So that'll enable charge capture uh, through, of course, a better integration. It'll allow you to store all your modalities in a single place, and it also eliminates duplicate patient entry uh, to ease the workflow, both at the, uh, at the practice management software and at your capture device. And then finally, web packs is a great enabler of data bank backup and accessibility, and more importantly, safe data backup and accessibility. So having all this stored in the cloud and remotely, uh, Webpacks uh, removes the needs for, need for servers and workstations to store the data locally. Uh, images, of course, are uh, securely stored in the cloud. And then because they're stored in the cloud, you can access these imaging studies from anywhere using any internet-enabled device. So uh, I know our better, uh, our better customers are very familiar with cloud technology, of course. Uh, so Webpacks, again, is a web-based uh, pack solution, so it is fully cloud-based, and it does now have full bi-directional integration with Better. So uh, like I mentioned before, we have some key benefits to this bi-directional communication. Uh, first, it ensures charge capture, uh, both for ordering images, uh, as well as those images that weren't requested. Uh, it's smart enough to know that if you captured a, a chest radiograph that wasn't ordered in Better, it's smart enough to understand that and also prompt you and better to go back and charge for that so you don't have any missed charges. Second, it improves the workflow by removing duplicate patient entry. So uh, you would request images from the patient record directly in better. It'll then send all of Fluffy's information back to the modality that you'd like to capture images on. 
And then when your technical staff goes back and goes to acquire those images, uh, they would essentially uh, select from a, uh, a work list on that uh, device, whatever that is, uh, that you have requested images on Fluffy. They would then capture those images. And once those images are done, they're both available in Webpacks as well as directly from the patient's electronic medical record in Better. Speaking of uh, the EMR, it does allow us to complete the medical record uh, with our DICOM, with all DICOM compliant images sor imaging source sources in the patient medical note. So within the patient's medical note, you can have all your diagnostics, including all your DICOM imaging modalities now as well. And finally, it'll allow you to order, store, and review all the imaging sources in one place. So uh, again, thinking about it in context of an image management software, uh, we know that you use different imaging sources to uh, get to a diagnosis and to work up a case. So this allows us to view all those, case, all those imaging sources in the context of the patient. So whether that's an ultrasound uh, cine loop or ultrasound, ultrasound stills, uh, full body x-ray, or digital dental or CT or an MR, really any uh, medical imaging source, you can, all, you can look at all those in the same uh, imaging platform. And again, this is all in the context of the patient workup as opposed to going to each device to view those images separately. So I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about using these imaging modalities uh, to be a better communicator. And uh, again, kind of thinking about this in a uh, visual sort of way, we know that a picture is worth a thousand words. So we want to help partner with you guys to use the technology that you've already invested in to stand out. So whether you're an early adopter of diagnostic imaging uh, or you've recently jumped into a DR system or updated your ultrasound machine, we all know that digital radiography and digital imaging brings uh, technician time savings and it can help improve patient care. So we're looking to use these images to, in, uh, to put them into one, uh, one imaging uh, management uh, source being IDEX Webpacks. And we're looking to uh, enable you as a practitioner to easily access these images as a way to then uh, share these images with your pet owners in an image review, help establish value, uh, ultimately show your investment in, uh, in forward thinking diagnostics like digital imaging, and then support your recommendations for further diagnostics or ultimately your treatment plan. So we know that the use of digital imaging and digital radiography skyrocketed over the last seven or 10 years. And our, uh, our data shows that over 90% of practices have uh, digital radiography. Uh, we also know that 70% have digital dental and another 70% have ultrasound. So overall, we know that the vast majority of practices have digital radiography. And then really the majority of practices have uh, either one or both digital dental or ultrasound. And again, looking at general practices here. So we know that most practices have embraced digital radiography and knowing that we've gone to this technology-based platform, uh, it gives us the ability to uh, uh, work within the software to help make sharing images with pet owners and sharing images with clients much easier to again help establish uh, the, uh, the need for the diagnostic itself and ultimately justify and help support uh, any, uh, the need for any additional diagnostics or the uh, treatment plan that we're recommending. So uh, how do we recommend sharing digital images with clients? So if you're looking here, again, we're IDEX and we're, uh, we're talking about Webpacks really in this discussion. So what you see over here on the left side of your screen is a screenshot from Webpacks. So uh, down in the right-hand corner, you can see we've circled the share button. It's a very simple feature. And uh, we've brought up our share box here. So you can email images very easily. You see right next to the email here, I'll see if I can point to it with my cursor. You can DICOM share with uh, a uh, specialty hospital or an emergency, or emergency hospital that you partner with. We partner with telemedicine consults. IDEX has its own telemedicine business, but we also allow you to use uh, Webpacks to integrate with other telemedicine consults as well. We have a great uh, interactive feature that allows you to collaborate in real time with up to two other practitioners or pet owners to show images, manipulate the images. There's a text feature there as well but it allows you to get second opinions from your peers or even to uh, share images in real time, uh, knowing we're really in a remote-based environment right now with COVID. It's a, a great enabler of remote-based image reviews as well if you'd like to mark up images and then share it that way with pet owners. And then finally in the share feature, we have a partner with OFA. So we do have a simple OFA submission form integrated directly into Webpacks. 
So talking about uh, sharing images, uh, I did want to highlight kind of the ease of use of our platform here, but talk a little bit more about uh, why share uh, images with clients. So uh, first and foremost, uh, it does show kind of the customer what they're getting for their money. We've recommended diagnostics, whether that be blood diagnostics or in this case, imaging diagnostics. And showing customers images uh, gives them justification as to what they're getting for their value there. It also uh, lets the client see directly what's happening with a pet. Uh, we frequently are visual learners, uh, many of us are, and by uh, viewing the x-ray and pointing out exactly what may be happening, why Fluffy may be presenting with the symptoms that we're seeing, it also helps justify really what kind of what we're recommending here from a, uh, from a treatment plan perspective. Sharing images with clients also allows them to uh, communicate the information that we're sharing with a pet owner back to their, uh, their family or their loved ones, other stakeholders in the pet's health. So sharing these images and then walking them through uh, what we're seeing as practitioners does allow us to then extend that value and extend that communication and client education back home to uh, you know, mom, dad, or the rest of the family that may not have been able to be there in the practice with us. All right, like I mentioned, uh, the majority of our practices have already upgraded to diagnostic imaging in one form or fashion, and that upgrade to digital imaging uh, just makes sharing easier. So for those of you who remember that we've, uh, the days back when we would use film for cameras, uh, film and processing and getting those images and then sharing them was kind of a headache. It was a big process and it was difficult. Uh, same thing with the films that we used to use for medical imaging. We would capture them. They would be a varying quality for a variety of reasons, whether the uh, processor was working properly, the age of the chemicals, uh, how, uh, how still the patient was during the images, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that digital imaging does in general is it gives us some latitude within the image to manipulate it, to take an okay shot, and just make some small changes to the uh, contrast, uh, the window level, and, and get that image exactly where we need it to be diagnostic quality. And it also allows us to zoom in on areas of interest. So uh, we wanna highlight all those benefits of going to digital imaging uh, and, and the benefits that the software gives us uh, by, by, by showing that to clients and whether that's uh, allowing uh, the clients to have those images to take home, emailing them, and they may not know exactly what they're looking at after the fact, but they may ne never seen a uh, picture of Fluffy, uh, an x-ray of Fluffy before, and it's something that they may go back and, and post on social media or something like that. And again, the point I made a moment ago is having those images available to help share back to the other stakeholders in that pet's health are going to be beneficial as well. So let's talk a little bit about where we share these images with pet owners. So uh, IDEX did a study and uh, we asked uh, over 500 practices where they're sharing uh, images with their pet owners. And we found that really two main areas uh, popped up as predominantly where they're being shared. The first and the majority, 65% of uh, pet owners, or excuse me, practices, said they were sharing their images within the examination room. Uh, we'll get a little bit more into this in a second, but we believe this is the best, most comfortable area to share images. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about why, but we're happy to see that the majority of uh, practitioners have started uh, sharing the images within the examination room. Looking at the right side of the screen, you'll see that about 27% of practices are still sharing x-rays within the radiology suite, and this could be for a variety of reasons. Uh, you may not have the capability of showing x-rays anywhere outside of the x-ray capture station back in radiology, uh, and if you do have that capability, you may just not have set it up yet. Or uh, you could have a better monitor back there and you really want to, to show it on the bigger, better monitor that's back there. But we did find that about a third, quarter, a third of practices are sharing back in the radiology suite. Then we found this other category that was sharing them elsewhere. So this could be anywhere from kind of a consultation room. Some practices that we've seen have set up uh, image, image sharing rooms where they've dedicated a, a big space, a big screen TV to share images and, and communicate details like this outside of the exam room, but not quite the radiology suite. So we believe that where you share these images does matter to how the overall image review goes. So like I mentioned, there's two predominant places that are being, that where we're sharing images right now. One's in the radiology suite and the other's in, in, in the exam room. Uh, IDEX uh, strongly encourages uh, practitioners to share images in the exam rooms for a variety of reasons, and I'll kind of talk about those in a, sec in a second. Uh, there's benefits to doing it in the exam rooms, but there's also drawbacks to doing it in the radiology suite. 
So I'll list some of those right now. The first is that the radiology suite is in a private place in most practices. Uh, first, we have to walk through uh, likely treatment or kind of through a hallway that takes us through different parts of the practice that may not necessarily be customer facing. Uh, and because that area is not private, you may, uh, and, and it's probably likely next to treatment, uh, pet owners may see things they're not used to seeing. So this could be uh, dogs waking up, uh, unique smells or sounds or sights that they're just not used to seeing on the front side of the practice. Additionally, because this room isn't private, uh, clients may be a little bit reluctant to ask uh, questions that they may be worried that are, you know, quote unquote, stupid, stupid questions in front of other medical staff. So while they might have a question that's very medically relevant to the situation, and may be very important for them, they may be reluctant to ask it because they're shy or they just don't want to come off as being uh, not knowledgeable in front of other staff. Next, like I mentioned a minute ago, there's distractions uh, of other patients getting care. So there may be someone getting a dental cleaning on a table nearby. There may be uh, other situations happening in the back. An emergency may walk in. We can never plan for that, of course. So there's just the uh, kind of that unknown of the medical treatment space. <clears throat> Next, some uh, digital imaging systems set up their, uh, their capture setup with a lower quality monitor, and not for any other reason than just they provide a monitor to make sure that the right anatomy is captured during the uh, image acquisition, but it's really not meant to be a diagnostic quality monitor. It's just a way that's pretty commonly set up from, uh, from some vendors. Ida does provide high quality monitors with RDR, but we also understand why some vendors would, would set up a system as a capture station and then dedicate a viewing station elsewhere. So if they are showing it on the capture station, it could be a lower quality monitor. And with that, if it is uh, on the capture station, it may lack some of those viewing tools and uh, review tools like zoom, contrast, invert, those abilities to manipulate the uh, image to zoom in on a focus, focus area or even a highlight certain things could be lacking back in capture uh, if you are showing in the radiology suite. So because of that, uh, we also, we, we strongly recommend showing images in exam rooms. A uh, few reasons for that. One, it's a very private place that we can have an open discussion. So we're, as pet owners, are used to having uh, a, a veterinarian come in, do a uh, physical exam, and answer questions, and go through the annual, uh, an annual visit, typically in the exam room. So when we come in and we're having issues that require images, we're already comfortable in that space. And it allows us to, to have a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one dedicated private conversation. Second, while in that room, we recommend asking questions that start with what. <clears throat> so something like, what questions can I answer about your pet's images and my diagnostic, my diagnosis? Uh, we think that's a better way to open up the conversation rather than, do you have questions? It's so easy to answer that with no or not really. So we ask, uh, we, we recommend opening up with a more open and a way of asking about the pet's uh, diagnosis and their images. <clears throat> Next, we recommend presenting the treatment plan with services and fees where the client can ask questions. So <clears throat> a lot of times the outcome of the images is either further diagnostics or it's a treatment plan. And uh, we recommend having those fees available so you can have that holistic conversation at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, uh, if you are showing images in the exam room, especially if you're utilizing IDEX web packs within your vetter software, you're able to use all the manipulation tools and all the uh, veterinary specific tools that we provide to help highlight specific areas. We'll show some of these tools here in a little bit, but uh, to highlight specific areas, call out specific things within the image, and uh, ultimately to help that education process that you have within the practice. So what are some best practices for leading, for, from leading hospitals? <clears throat> the first, like I'd mentioned, is show the exam, the images in the exam rooms. We also recommend always sharing the digital images. And even if it's something, uh, full body digital x-rays of a small dog or a cat where you have the, uh, the, the head, the tail, you kind of have all the anatomy there on one screen is, is pretty easy to understand and we, we recognize that. Uh, and it's easy to walk through, right? You can kind of point to where the head is, the tail is, the heart. You can kind of get the, the, lay, the layout of how the patient's positioned there pretty quickly. And even knowing things like ultrasound or even digital dental in a lot of cases aren't quite as clear and may not be uh, quite as obvious for a non-medical pet owner to digest. 
we still recommend using this as an opportunity to show exactly what's happening. And next, uh, we recommend uh, giving clients a layman's tour of the images. So what do I mean by layman's tour of the images? So we recommend really going through the basics of anatomy of what we're focusing on. <clears throat> if we've captured a full body x-ray and we're really focusing on the heart, we recommend using the tools and uh, the software to, to zoom in and really focus down on that specific area of the image. We then recommend explaining how the image will help you diagnose the problem or rule out potential other causes. We know that when pet owners bring in their, their pets, especially uh, when they're not doing right or they need some additional treatment other than just an annual, they're generally worried and they're, they're looking for what, some kind of an answer in what's happening with my pet right now and what are we gonna do to, to, to help remedy that. And uh, clients have little to no understanding of the benefits of diagnostic imaging in general. So taking this as an opportunity to just briefly share what I'm doing, why I'm using it this way, talk a little bit about the uh, non-invasive uh, aspects of diagnostic imaging, especially things like ultrasound, uh, is another good way of explaining why you've chosen this as a diagnostic tool for the patient. <clears throat> Explain how the image can help you provide the best care. And uh, we, we ask that you do all this because we know that uh, with education, compliance increases. And uh, as compliance increases, we know that uh, that improves the overall patient care and the hospital revenue. So another reason to uh, show digital images to uh, pet owners is because 65% of us are visual learners. What I mean by visual learners is that we comprehend best when we're shown images, models, graphics, things that demonstrate the product, the problem, or the need for the treatment that we're recommending. Uh, something to expect from visual, visual learners, you've probably seen this before, but they want to snap photos, they may want a copy of those images in their inbox, or they may even want to uh, record a video or an audio with their smartphones of you walking through what's happening and what your treatment recommendation is. So they really want to get in depth with them, they really want to see what's happening. Uh, one of the things that we recommend is when you're thinking about this, uh, think explain and record. So what's happening and how can you deliver it to the pet owner that they can digest it and repeat it back if necessary. So outside of that 65%, we found that the next 20 to 25% are auditory learners. By auditory learners, we mean uh, individuals that can learn from simply just uh, a lecture or a discussion. So words alone are enough to where they can generally understand what's happening and take it back in a fully comprehensive way. <clears throat> and then the last we have is 10 to 15% are tactical learners. This is the smallest group and ultimately tactical learners are, are the doers. They have to do something and they have to perform a task in order to uh, understand. So this is where the uh, tactical models come in play. So those uh, models of the hearts or the uh, stifles that you have in your practice, this is where those really come in play and these types of learners really respond well to those. So finally, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, millennials. So millennials are now making up the largest pet owner owning segment in the marketplace. Um, a little bit of an older uh, uh, presentation from earlier this year, but by 2020, we've added 2.6 million pet owners from this millennial category. And this was a pre-COVID number. So uh, many of us know the effects of COVID and what that's had on pet adoption rates and new puppy and new kitten ownership. Uh, so this was uh, really prior to COVID. Uh, we expected 2.6 million pet owners from the millennial segment in 2020 alone. So what do we know about the millennial category? We know that they grew up in the digital age. They're used to technology and they respond very well and very familiarly to having uh, things presented to them in a technological way. Uh, they're on their smartphones, they've had smartphones for years, and they're early adopters of this type of technology. And we found that by, high, by communicating to them through technology mediums, like an image review through Webpacks, uh, we found that they tend to understand more, they tend to be more receptive, and we overall see that they tend to uh, assign more value to that experience rather than in uh, lower technology ways. All right, so let's talk a little bit about strategies to educate using imaging. <clears throat> so first, we want to create an experience of understanding. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, let's take owners on a guided diagnostic journey. So uh, 
and, and it'll feel like you're explaining it from a very basic standpoint. I'm sure you do a great job of this right now, but really, what are we looking at? We have an image, we have an x-ray, we have an ultrasound, we have a dental film. Uh, what are we looking at? Where, where within the uh, anatomy of the patient is this image taken? What are we looking for and what are we finding? Explain, here's what we found and here's what needs to happen next. Again, that might be other diagnostics, that might be a treatment plan, and also we recommend using images to follow the case over time. So uh, a couple examples that come to mind for this, and we'll get into one here in a moment, but stones, capture x-rays and you see that they're stones. Uh, showing the, the stone image and recommending the treatment plan to eradicate those. And then showing the post-op where the stones have been removed side by side with the, the, the previous picture will uh, be very valuable and ultimately gives you kind of a backdrop to explain Here's why Fluffy wasn't feeling good when, when she came in the first time. Here's what we did. You can see we've been able to take care of all those stones, and ultimately that's why we're why Fluffy seems so much happier right now. So using that as an opportunity to follow the case through time, uh, pre and post orthopedic x-rays, uh, really finding a way to, to, to illustrate where we started, what we did, and then where we've come to. Uh, Imaging is a great way to use that as a, uh, as a way to tell that story. <clears throat> Next, what makes a good image review? So a few points here. So first we recommend discuss the images and the diagnoses in the privacy of the exam rooms, like I mentioned. Use layman's terms, keep it simple. Uh, we recommend marking up imaging, images, excuse me. <clears throat> we, uh, we have a very simple way we can do this in web packs, I'll show you in a moment. But we recommend marking up the images so that it's very clear what you're looking at, what the area of interest is, and, uh, and, and that will help us pivot into what needs to happen next. Number four, invite questions. Again, thinking of open-ended questions like what questions do you have? How can I give you more information to help you make a decision? Things like that. Then last, ask for a commitment to treat or really if you need additional diagnostics for those. So what questions can I answer about your pet's treatment? Shall we schedule your pet's procedure? Do you need more information or I've explained enough for you to decide? So uh, taking the opportunity to have this discussion in the exam room allows the uh, pet owner to have all the information they need, uh, gather any additional information they need from their medical professional while they're there, and then ultimately make uh, decisions on next steps that can be scheduled or taken care of immediately. All right, let's talk a little bit about a successful image presentation. So, uh, all right, so, uh, We've got, so apologies for that. So we'll go through a brief case study, uh, like I'd mentioned, uh, that we'll just kind of set up some of the tools that uh, you've got a preview to, but without the voiceover. So in this case, we've got an eight-year-old intact female pug. Uh, she presented uh, with vomiting and had dark runny stool today. She won't eat, so we ran lab tests, we performed radiographs, and we ultimately sent the radiographs off to telemedicine consults. So the radiographs revealed we had bladder stones, or Katie rather had bladder stones. So what we did is we gave a guided tour of the images uh, to the pet owner. Uh, we did a brief orientation about the different uh, parts of the pet anatomy, so where the head, where the tail is. Uh, we talked about the bladder stones. Uh, in this case, they were fairly obvious, fairly large bladder stones. And uh, ultimately talked about next steps to resolve the problem. So to zoom in on the uh, image here, a little bit more. You can see that uh, what you're looking at here, the screen, is the uh, image pulled up in IDEX Webpacks. And our software is very easy to use, uh, very straightforward and very intuitive. So <clears throat> with just a couple of clicks, we've drawn a circle around the stones to indicate exactly what we're looking for. Uh, like I mentioned, imaging can be a little overwhelming for a non-medical professional. You have a lot going on. We've got uh, bone, we've got soft tissue, we've got some thorax here as well. So highlighting the specific area of interest in this case, or even zooming in on it would have been another strategy, is a good way to focus the, the, the audience on exactly what we're talking about. So in this case, we've done that with a circle. We can then use our uh, ruler to measure the stones very quickly. In this case, the stones measure uh, 21 and a half millimeters, roughly. And then uh, we happen to have images available of another pet that we had seen over the last couple of weeks that presented with much smaller stones. So we may have communicated to the pet owner that uh, these stones are exceptionally large or larger than normal. And uh, we are using this other image that we were able to pull up as an abnormal, but a reference image. So we're talking about having uh, our pet, Katie, or Katie over here on the left, 
we've got the stones, but typically we don't see, see stones this big. So here's a comparison of a similar, similarly sized dog with uh, stones that are much smaller. So you can do an easy comparison side by side here. And in that case, that was kind of comparing to an abnormal, but we do have an entire uh, a normal reference image library baked into IDEX Webpacks. So I'll go back a slide. <clears throat> Uh, but what you have here is uh, a no an abnormal that the uh, practice happened to have available that they could pull. But we do have an entire library of normal images with an, uh, a unique feature to IDEX called the Reference Image Library. Uh, these images are normal. Uh, we have gone through our telemedicine consults and our imaging exports to uh, ensure that they are considered normal and, and common examples of a thorax in this case. But what it allows you to do is take the PET image, which you see over here on the left, and compare that to uh, a normal image from our library. So you would just click uh, our reference image library tool in the top. Uh, in the normal section, you can select from small, medium, large. Uh, we have uh, small, medium, large patients as well as feline. We've also uh, added in uh, some specific uh, exotic patients as well. We have a turtle, rabbit, uh, bird, and a, uh, a lizard uh, for uh, normals for exotics. And so it gives you a, a breadth of normal comparisons to make here. So we've selected this normal. So uh, in this case, looking at a thorax, if uh, let's just say uh, this heart is abnormally shaped or enlarged, you can show that typically uh, hearts uh, in this normal example don't quite have that same bulge or the same swelling here uh, on the back side. Here's all the reasons why we may be concerned about that. Here's why we're recommending additional diagnostics or treatment. But it gives you an opportunity uh, of predetermined normals to be able to show side by side again for client communication and education. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that we also have an abnormal section up here. While IDEX doesn't provide abnormal images as a comparison, it does give you the opportunity to uh, <clears throat> assign images as abnormal. Uh, you can also assign normal images as well. I'll get into some detail with that in a second. But for abnormals, in that example I was showing with Katie a moment ago, if you did see some stones that were uh, they're abnormal, but let's say typical of stones, you could very easily just click to assign that as an abnormal. Or if you see stones that are particularly large, you can also assign really any abnormal image up to this abnormal category. And uh, the software, when you go to pull up the reference image library, will give you your library of abnormal uh, images that you've identified. Uh, we find that value valuable if you see specific cases happen routinely or if you're an orthopedic practice, you tend to do uh, a lot of uh, uh, stifle procedures or specific procedures that you want to show uh, specific abnormals kind of routinely because you see a lot of the similar cases over and over again. It's a great tool for that. And like I'd mentioned, you can also assign normals yourself. We've uh, <clears throat> added a uh, entire bank of normals. I think we have close to 200 uh, normal images within the uh, library. But if you tend to see uh, or, or specialize in uh, specific patients, uh, say you specialize in Cavalier King Charles or uh, English Bulldogs, you can go in and you can assign specific, uh, your own normals from this specific breed uh, into the uh, bank of normals that will allow you to then pull that, that, that's customized for your practice based on the unique patient group that you see. Uh, that brings me up to one more point I wanna make on this before I go to the next slide. We have also added breed specific normals in here as well. Uh, so we have uh, 14 breeds from some of the most common uh, normal breeds that we see uh, that we see in, in practice. And we've already added those. So if you do have, a, I have to name a few, English Bulldog, French Bulldog, I believe we have Labs and Cavalier King Charles and Shih Tzu. And we have, again, 14 of the most common breeds you'll see. Uh, it will also prompt you for those breeds within the reference image library as well, if you go to pull up a side-by-side -side comparison. So you can uh, do some additional searching. For the most part, it knows that uh, you've pulled up a, a lateral thorax on the left. So when you click the reference image library, it'll pull up your lateral thorax images on the right. Uh, it typically defaults to the medium size over here. Again, you can select small and large. If you know you have a very large dog, you can just select large, or you can select medium and large, and it'll give you the entire grouping. Uh, or if you want to search for a specific one, it does give you this search feature up here where you can type in keywords to search for other images. It's very intuitive, very quick, and uh, in the course of normal practice, it's a very easy tool to grab 
uh, from a, a tablet or from a computer in the exam room. It's a very easy tool, an intuitive tool to grab and uh, navigate quickly through to show a comparison for that image review. All right, so again, uh, looking at uh, the abnormal example that I was sharing, uh, this is a good chance to maybe tag one or both of these as your abnormal so you can bring those up quickly in the future. And if you do that, you can see our uh, pet is up here on the top, our patient's up here on the top. Our abnormal reference image here is down at the bottom. We found that from clicking this tab up here. And uh, again, you can continue to assign more abnormals if it fits your practice. All right, so uh, looking at sharing radiographs within the, uh, with, with our pet owners, uh, the Webpacks platform makes it very easy to do that. So we do allow you to uh, store images from any modalities. So you can see digital dental up here. IDEX doesn't sell a digital dental radiograph machine, but uh, Webpacks does integrate with most digital dental systems in the marketplace. It also allows you to upload JPEG images. So in this case, we've done an intraoral dental study. We've also done a teeth cleaning. So you can see uh, we've captured x-rays of uh, multiple shots in the mouth. And this is a great way to reinforce, one, the value that you provide from that dental cleaning, uh, as well as any, uh, uh, any need to go through kind of a full mouth tour of what you captured, either why the pet's images or pet's uh, teeth look so healthy and good, or if you're re recommending or did remove some teeth or need some additional procedures to, to be done, this is a great way to show the inside of the mouth in a non-gruesome way, in a very simple, uh, clean way from the exam room. Uh, directly from the patient record and better. So a good question that came up in this case is why did you extract so many teeth? So again, uploading these images, uh, having or integrating your digital dental with Webpacks, uploading some JPEGs from the camera that you took makes it really easy to communicate these things. You can show the picture, you can point out exactly what was happening within the patient uh, to explain what was happening. Was there bone loss? Were there lesions? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, depending on how your workflow works, uh, you could go in in advance, do some quick circling areas. If you did find an abscessed root or something like that, you can go in and quickly and easily circle that before going into the exam room. So it's queued up and ready to go for the uh, image review with a pet owner. Then, like I mentioned before, here's a great example of a teeth cleaning before and after. Uh, you can see that uh, on the left, we have the dirty teeth. On the right, we have the nice uh, pearly white clean teeth. Uh, in this case, we've even gone through and just typed in the before and after. Not sure that was necessary based on the outcome here, but uh, if you wanted to, you can pretty easily identify these as before and after. And then again, we can share these back with the pet owners uh, to help, uh, one, to help justify the cost that they paid, and then also help them communicate what exactly happened to Fluffy when, uh, when she was in the practice today. All right, so uh, we've got about 15 minutes left, so I'll just take a brief uh, couple of minutes to share a little bit about IDEX Diagnostic Imaging in general. So mm -hmm. IDEX Diagnostic Imaging does provide it, uh, integrated imaging solutions for your practice. Uh, we've been talking a lot today about IDEX Webpacks. Uh, we also do sell uh, digital radiography products, specifically DR products for your practice. So uh, the slide you're looking at here talks a little bit about where our integrated solutions fit within your practice. So within your PIM system or your practice management, your VETR system, uh, you would, of course, uh, be able to check in uh, your, your patient. If you have to uh, order radiographs or diagnostics, we do integrate with that. So we do integrate with VETR, as I had mentioned. Uh, then our, integrating, our integrated solutions include, again, DR systems as well as the Webpacks solution. These things can be done uh, uh, together or they, you can adopt IDEX Webpacks that can integrate with a, uh, any other DR system, with ultrasound, with dental, or if you have advanced uh, modalities like CT or MR, you can also just use the Webpacks platform as your image management software uh, for these diagnostics you already have in practice, and that'll give you this uh, capability of integrating uh, fully with your better practice management software. And then kind of on the back end of that, we, uh, Webpacks is a great integration medium for, like I said, practice management software, but also our Vet Connect Plus platform. If you're using other blood diagnostics from IDEX, you're familiar with this platform <clears throat> or telemedicine platform. So you may be familiar with that platform as well, but we have a very tight integration between Webpacks and telemedicine 
for a streamlined and a simple uh, referral process there. So a little bit about IDEX. So IDEX has been in the veterinary industry for over 35 years now. Uh, I believe it's now 37 years, but the 35 is a nice anchor. Uh, we're, uh, we're focused on uh, the veterinary space, so uh, all of our diagnostics and our efforts within that, uh, that space are all focused on the veterinary, the veterinary industry, so we're not some spinoff of a human health care company or something like that. Uh, we're committed to improving the lives of pets and people, and we're really dedicated on investments in developing uh, new tools and diagnostics that are specific for animal health and specific for the medicine that you practice. And then uh, with all that research and development that we do, we're really looking to customize diagnostic and information management solutions for your practice. So the diagnostic tools we're talking about here that are really relevant to this conversation would be uh, one of our DR solutions uh, or for information management, we've talked a lot about it today, but our Webpack platform. So uh, IDEX uh, is a uh, number one choice for diagnostic imaging for a number of uh, customers today, and they really choose it for four different reasons. <clears throat> First off, uh, we have unmatched diagnostic quality images at a low dose of radiation. So we've specifically designed our DR systems for the veterinary imaging space, and uh, we have low dose uh, DR systems across the board, as well as our DR50 system that is the lowest dose system on the market uh, today. Second, we have optimal sharing, consult consulting, and image storage with IDEX webpacks. So uh, uh, again, we have fully integrated software platform uh, through the Webpacks, uh, the Webpacks software that has veterinary specific diagnostic imaging tools and features. <clears throat> we have integration with leading practice management software like Vetter specifically. Then we have direct and immediate access to specialists in the veter veterinary diagnostic imaging field. And those specialists uh, uh, range across uh, the gamut of specialists. So that includes radiologists, that includes 24-7 uh, remote, remote and on-site support. Uh, we have a, an entire team of field installation professionals. Uh, and then we have radi radiation safety experts and resources available at idex.com forward slash radiation safety. So uh, a little bit more about the systems that we offer. So idex does offer three DR systems. We have the ImageView DR50. ImageView DR40 and ImageView DR50, uh, DR30. Uh, the ImageView DR50 is our premium flagship product. <clears throat> this is the uh, this system does capture uh, sharp images at the lowest radiation dose in the market. So the DR50 plate itself, I won't get into too much detail, but it's a highly sensitive plate, uh, more sensitive than any other plate on the marketplace, which allows us to capture images at the lowest dose of radiation on the market. The key benefit there is, of course, uh, we're looking to create safe environments for ourselves and our staff. And also, when you capture x-rays at a lower dose of radiation, you're capturing images uh, with a shorter capture time, uh, which can ultimately uh, minimize motion blur. Uh, if we're capturing x-rays with lower exposure, it's a shorter exposure, and shorter exposures generally result in less motion blur, so sharper images. Uh, the DR40 and the DR30 are also low-dose sharp image quality systems, but I did want to take a moment to highlight the DR50 as the lowest and the sharpest in the industry. And finally, we have uh, ImageView uh, CR20. Uh, this is our CR20 option. Uh, it's great for smaller volume practices or practices that need the flexibility of capturing x-rays for uh, larger, larger animals or capturing x-rays on a lateral beam for exotics or something like that. But we do also have a CR option uh, that's lower price and uh, slower throughput for those lower volume practices. <clears throat> so I mentioned uh, image quality a moment ago as a result of lower dose. Uh, but really, uh, our primary thing that we're doing to optimize image quality is our Clear Capture DX image processing software. So all of our systems I just talked about come with Clear Capture DX image processing software. But this is a software that has been uh, optimized and in, in customized by IDEX, uh, specifically for veterinary medicine and the patients that you practice medicine on, to take the raw data that you see on the left, which is really what's coming off that piece of hardware, and, uh, and uh, uh, processing that into a uh, highly diagnostic and very user-friendly image uh, that you see over here on the right. So any DR system or CR system you buy will have some image processing software on it. What we found most are very off the rack and uh, 
and, and, and they, they work, but uh, depending on uh, the, the amount of, of customization that's gone into it from the vendor, we've seen a variable level of image quality coming off those image processing systems. And so we did want to take a moment to highlight how uh, robust and how uh, sharp the uh, IDEX clear capture image processing is uh, when it comes to the, the systems that we're selling. And uh, talking about service support, all our, uh, all our systems do come with IDEX Care Plus as an option. This is our extended warranty, so it gives you direct and immediate access to specialists in the veterinary industry. Uh, we're highly responsive with 24-hour resolution on most issues. <clears throat> and then we also use this as a way to enhance your system to uh, extend the value over time. So software updates to your system so that uh, a system purchased from IDEX in five years has more capabilities and more functionality than it did from before because we're frequently updating our systems. And last but not least, before we get to question and answer is IDEX does uh, provide a variety of radiation safety tools for your practice uh, at no charge. So uh, we have lowerthedose.org, which is a, uh, <clears throat> a partnership across the industry with NAVTA, ACVR, and AHA as a way to help uh, drive the conversation around uh, being dose conscious and being safe and taking safe radiology practices back with us into our own practices, just being cognizant about how much exposure we're getting to radiation. And then uh, second, we have the uh, IDEX radiation safety portal. This is really the premier source of information for radio radiation safety in the, the industry. Again, we have a variety of free tools here. Uh, there's no need to be an IDEX customer or to spend any money with IDEX to get this. We're really just trying to drive that radiation safety awareness throughout the veterinary industry. So. Some things that we have here are a free radiation safety toolkit. We have a link to the IDEX Learning Center, a link to our Practice Life periodical, uh, links to state regulations, and then we have some information on the ImageView DR50. Again, that's our lowest dose system. So with that, uh, we've got a couple more minutes. I'll pause and see if we have any uh, questions and answers. Hey, Jeff, thank you. That was excellent. So we've been able to answer some questions throughout, so we're pretty much caught up. Um, but if anyone has any additional questions, please type them in the chat box located on the right-hand side of your screen and hit enter to submit. If you do not see your chat box, if you hover over the bottom of your screen, a chat icon will appear and you can click on it to expand the box. Um, if you do have um, additional information after we close today, Please note that if you want to learn more about Webpacks as a best-in-class solution, please call or visit the website listed on the slide Jeff will put up for us. Um, so um, right now, Jeff, we don't have any, any more questions. 